Hi, so I'm going to be recording a really quick video covering Bubble and Google Analytics 4. So I asked Twitter and lots of people were also curious about it and stuck as well. And I managed to figure out something. So I thought I'd record a quick video before delaying too much. Uh, just some thoughts. It's not an extensive tutorial, but a place to get started if you don't find something else elsewhere. Uh, maybe I may find time to record a more detailed one, but this is what we have at the moment. Okay, so step number one, uh, this is definitely uh, based on uh, Zero Codes plugin, uh, which is uh, extended Google Analytics plugin, uh, not the editor, uh, extended Google Analytics plugin, bubble, this one. Yeah, so luckily the plugin code is available. You can see the source of the code. Uh, you can see the source and it also has these very limited instructions. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, uh, I basically went through them. They had skipped a few and tried it in one of our test applications. And uh, let me just explain. Login with Google for patterns. Okay, so step number one is to create your app id and app secret okay so you can create a project but at the end you you need to come to whatever you just create a project at the end you need to come to this credentials tab in api and services okay api and services credentials google keeps changing uh but sometimes like this is the place you need to reach create credentials oauth client id and after OAuth client ID, you can select web application. So new tutorial OAuth uh, GA4. And in authorized redirect URI, this is fairly straightforward, which it is said. So our bubble app version test page name. So the page I'm using is uh, test. Okay. And uh, our app's name is patterns2. Uh, if you connect a domain, change the domain. Uh, but here's what the previous one configuration looks like GA4. Uh, yeah, patterns to bubble apps version test, test the page name, debug mode true, test, test, and test. So version test with debug mode, without debug mode, need these. And once we have the client ID and client secret, just a test app, so you can't do much with it. Uh, and I'll reset the secret after the video anyways. So the other thing that's missing in this is that you need to enable Google Analytics 4 as well. So enabled API services, you need to enable uh, Google Analytics 4. So that is something I had to do. Uh, I is enabled all of them. I'm not like this, this, this. I think this is the latest one. They keep changing names, or maybe it's this one. Uh, but yeah, I enabled all three of them and I think I enabled Tag Manager as well. Uh, but I was just like spray painting, enabling everything. And once you've done that, create a button. Yeah, so that is a relatively straightforward. Uh, you can create a button and start edit workflow, sign up, login with social network, and that's Google Analytics. Okay, so that's what shows up with this Google Analytics plugin. All right, now what? How, how does this plugin work? This plugin works by using the API connector. So luckily we have the API configuration because this stuff is literally magic numbers, magic kind of param parameters, really hard stuff. So uh, they have a few APIs in their plugin. Uh, this fourth one, this is a Google Analytics 4 API call. So I've tried uh, looking for batch get and everything. And I was like, okay, this is an endpoint and we can use this endpoint, but I wanted another endpoint. So what did I do? I installed the API connector. I looked at this configuration and copied it over in my own app is in the API connector. And then after that, I created, I, I'm able to just create my own endpoints. Uh, I don't believe it will be possible to create our own endpoints using that plugin. So I, I don't think that's possible. Okay, so copy stuff over. Uh, initializing an endpoint is a tricky one. Let's. So what you need to do, I've named this GA4. Let me just call it GA4 ASCII, just to make sure it's very clear. Uh, if I make a button and 
put a workflow on it sign up login with OAuth provider API GA4 ASCII and I all I need to do to initialize this it's an OAuth fun way uh, make sure debug mode is true click the button it'll walk us through uh, various like just uh, Google Analytics and kind of the OAuth screens uh, it'll look a bit different I've only done this before uh, once this is done, it'll come back. Okay, we've successfully initialized the OAuth2 connection for API. You can go back to the editor. So the API connector is now happy. API and these API calls will now work. So these API calls, uh, now to disintegrate this API call and how I kind of found this, it's kind of a bit, it's quite different than a normal REST API endpoint. Uh, and how it kind of, the query is constructed. So in GA4's documentation, you have this documentation and it's pretty kind of like a bit hard to read. Luckily, they have what's called a query explorer, query builder. I don't know where I found this from. I, I did, I found this from somewhere here and they are like, you can test queries by using the query explorer. Okay, so in the query explorer, I authenticated my account and then I was able to, uh, you, you can do, just run, just kind of like create a basic query here. So select my own website and everything. I'm like, okay, we can tune lots of filter options. Let's say I want the seven day active users and I want the, uh, I don't know, city. Okay. And I want to sort it up or down by the active number of users. This, you, you can do loads of things in the query, make the request, and it will do, it will show the response at the bottom as well. So like, okay, it's people from London, Birmingham, where like usually if it's 16 people came, I don't know, it'd be me, maybe me as well. So uh, yeah, this query, we have to, uh, I, I had to end up formatting the JSON a bit. Let me just say, well, it's quite hard to, Okay. Okay. So this oh, September seventh. Okay. So this query is something now I can pass in this body JSON, as is the whole thing. Okay. And when I run it, it'll give me a response. Uh, and the response, like the the the, it's a bit tricky to because the headers can change, the dimensions can change, and the dimensions you pass, the dimensions you request depends on the JSON. So in the JSON, we ask, give me the city, give me the first user source. And they're like, okay, here's the city and here's the user source. So it's a bit like the repeating group structure gets a bit confusing. So what I had to do was create a repeating group and a repeating group and like, I think now previously my example was more configured for, uh, where is it, right? Oops, I think I caused, I moved this outside, okay. So if I need another dimension now, uh, yeah, it, that's a separate topic for some other point. Uh, now we just have, we've messed up the dimension of the repeating group because I added another one. Uh, we need to show dimensional value and uh, what is it? Dimension, rows, dimension value, metric value, metric value. So it's showing me not set, not set. Yeah, it's showing me all three in this strange fashion. So it shows the header and the dimension. It's a bit of a hard way to work with this API endpoint. Uh, I don't really have a solid way of just kind of like normalizing the data in like a spreadsheet format. Uh, there, there may be a way, but yeah, all the values are here. So it gave us, you asked for dimension city and first user source. And here's each line item, the dimensions, London, the values direct, the dimensions, Birmingham values direct, the dimensions, Lagos, Twitter.co. So it's just uh, a bit of a hard and quirky way of working with this API, but hopefully this video helps cover OAuth, Query Explorer, one API call, and it should be useful. Not an extended tutorial, but I thought I'd record something and dump it out there uh, because uh, sometimes I just prepare too much for a tutorial and lots of knowledge is being lost and not shared with the community. All right. Thank you very much. Bye.